Shuriken Sentai Ninja is the 39th Super Sentai series, but unlike Gokaiger, Bokenger, and Gowranger, the 35th, 30th, and 25th anniversaries, Ninja was initially announced as the 40th anniversary of the franchise and Go Ranger's debut. Ninja's robot was designed in part to represent a festival and anything fun, pulling from various facets of Japanese culture. Shurikenjin might have a seemingly disjointed theme, but special effects director Hiroshi Wakita wanted each component to pay homage to a past vehicle type in Super Sentai. The motifs were also meant to represent tenants of Cool Japan, an initiative spearheaded by the Japanese government to capitalize on the commercial potential of Japanese culture and pop culture. Shinobi Maru is meant to represent Budo, Wanmaru represents Japan's kawaii culture, Dump Maru and Bun Maru, a dump truck and train, represent Japan's technological advancements, while Drago Maru represents the western world's impact on Japanese pop culture. Ninja was originally intended to air on February 15th, 2015, but didn't actually premiere until the following week. This delay was due to the deluge of news coverage following the execution of a Japanese reporter by the Islamic State. Ninja's actual premiere, February 22nd, is often called Ninja Day, due to the first syllable of each word in the date beginning with Ni, often used as an onomatopoetic sound associated with Ninja. The creative staff included Kento Shimayama, who had worked on various episodes for other shows but never served as a head writer until Ninja. The producer, Naomi Takebe, previously worked on Tokume Sentai Go Busters, Kamen Rider Gaim, Kamen Rider O's, and Kamen Rider Kiva. Director Katsuya Watanabe broke the record for most Sentai episodes directed by a single person, breaking the record set by Shohei Tojo, who directed 209 episodes between Sun Vulcan and O-Ranger. Before Ninja became a ninja series, the team's motifs were what children imagined to be their dream jobs. There would have been promotional campaigns with companies in these respective fields. One of the jobs was Ninja, which eventually became the motif of the show itself. Ninja is the third Ninja Sentai, but the first to play against traditional stereotypes. The members were designed as having a brash, so what attitude, with the show's idea of what a ninja is being more in line with a Hollywood take on the concept of ninja. The energetic dance seen during the show's ending sequence was choreographed by Lucky Ikeda, who also did the choreography for the massively popular dance scene during Yokai Watch's first ending theme. The castle scene during the ending sequence itself isn't actually a real castle, but a folk museum in Chiba that was constructed in 1967. Takebe wanted the action to push the limits of what the human body was capable of achieving. While there was wire work in the series, a majority of flips and spins were performed entirely by the suit actors. To this end, two new suit actors, one with a history in stage show work requiring a lot of flips, were selected for the roles of Aka Ninja and Ao Ninja as the fresh blood for the show's suit cast. Unfortunately, the original suit actor for Aka Ninja injured himself and was unable to take on the role until episode 9, but portrayed Hurricane Red in episode 7. For the Ninja Festival episode, Seiji Takaiwa, Ninja Red's original suit actor, returned after 21 years to play the character in suit. Action director Hirofumi Fukuzawa who originally played the Red Ranger in suit for over a decade, had the cast practice their falls on the ground itself rather than mats. Fukuzawa explains, doing it this way, they pay more attention to avoid being hurt, which speeds learning. Yakumo's actor, Gaku Matsumoto, had difficulties learning the action in the beginning. While the action is traditionally taught using the right hand, Matsumoto himself is left-handed and had to take extra time to learn the movements of the sword with his right hand. Ninja was the fourth family team in Sentai history after Five Man, Gogo Five, and Magiranger. Originally, the team members were all cousins before it was decided that the inclusion of a brother and sister pair as the Red and White Rangers would lead to an interesting dynamic. As a Sentai series, Ninja represents a multi-generational drama meant to appeal to all three generations of a family, the elderly, the parents, and the children. A major theme among the villains was their use of broken no masks, which was an idea brought up by designer Tomotsu Shinohara. No is a traditional form of Japanese theater, often considered Japanese opera, that deals with abstract concepts such as destiny and ideologies. Part of the villain Kyuemon's story involves a tendency to use those around him for his own gain. 
This is seen in his design, which uses a tiger and fox theme, and comes from the saying, the fox borrowing the tiger's might, which is used to refer to weak people's association to those in power for protection or as a means of obtaining something. To this end, Kyoimon's only story at the beginning of the show was that he was one of Yoshitaka's former disciples. Very early on during production, the enemy generals were designed to have their faces entirely visible in costume rather than being full suits. Kenji Matsuda and Megumi Han played the first two generals to appear. Matsuda himself was traditionally an on-screen actor, having played two different Kamen Riders in the past, as well as appearing in various movies and TV dramas, while Kyuimon's voice actress has a popular following as a voice actress idol. Following this change, future generals were cast with traditional voice acting talent. When crafting the story, head writer Kento Shimoyama said that he had a policy of not creating predictable plot lines. This meant that the show's story was a choose-your-own-adventure of sorts. There was a general direction, but the details were left vague so as to allow the story to branch off in any direction necessary based on production conditions and what recent episodes had done. Because of this, many elements that weren't originally part of the story were added in. The Kabedon scene in the first episode was based on a popular trend in both social media and screen media that involves a character slamming the wall next to their love interest, pinning them in with the love interest blushing. The scene was not actually scripted, but Hiroshi Wakta included it in the storyboards for that episode's action sequence. Tetsui Nara, the voice of Kami Itachi, the monster for that episode, completed the scene by ad-libbing the line during recording. <laughs> 